Hello, welcome to the first episode of Underrated Modern Comic Books. I'm, I'm lumping everything from the 80s onward in the modern title. Um, instead of doing modern and copper, I lump everything together. So keep in mind that some of the things that I will be showing in this series may come out in the 80s as well as the 90s or after 2000, but it's considered modern to simplify things. Um, for those that follow my channel long enough, you may have remembered that the very first Spider-Man comic book that I purchased off the rack was Spider-Man 252. Yes, that was the very first one. I bought many other titles from the Fantastic Four to the X-Men to Moon Knight to Teen Titans many titles but for whatever reason spider-man was not on my radar not by a long shot until issue 252 came out with that swipe cover and i and i like the black custom um yeah it just is new it was cool looking it's new so i bought it uh and then i keep buying spider-man going forward but it was definitely not my favorite title by far at that time. You know, Thor, Fantastic Four, even the X-Men and Teen Titans was way above it. But a few years later, when I was in college, when this book came out, I was mildly excited and even more excited a few issues later. And it's because it is the beginning of... Todd McFarlane in Spider-Man. Yes, this book. I'm sure many people... The cover is pretty good looking. I remember seeing this book and this is the copy that I bought off the rack. In fact, I bought this at the um, drugstore uh, near campus while I was away at college. And right away, what struck me was the crazy looking spider web, right? You know, for a long time, from at the early days of my collecting cycle, authors was regarded, like a lot of the authors that was big, was loved and respected and put up there like rock star. And for many years, even um, like Overstreet, if you look at the old Overstreet guys from the 70s through the 80s, there's a lot less footnotes as far as you know, first appearances of this or first cameo of that. But there was more focus on the artist as far as you know who the artist on certain issue, first time he drew that title or first time he draw that book, so forth, so on and so forth. There was a lot more attention to that and. People seek out, I did, I seek out um, the art of, uh, you know, many early artists I like from, uh, you know, uh, Bill Sienkiewicz to Mark Simonson. Um, it's, but the hobby has changed a little bit. Uh, certainly, the big name are still very much in the focus, but their first work is not as prized or talked about. Uh, as much as it used to be thus that's why I put this as an underrated book because you know Todd McFarlane I'm a big fan I'm you know just because I I like unique style of art um, it's not that he's better than you know John Byrne or Walt Simonson but I appreciate the uniqueness of his style and I really like I mean the art in here is pretty solid right off the bat and I really like because it was made by Bob McLeod, McLeod, Bob McLeod and Bob McLeod is a really good inker so you know certainly if you flip through this book as you can see here it's not um, 
I'm sure Bob McLeod, the way he ink, he cleaned up a lot. So it's not like it's a, a million little lines. Especially when you, when Todd McFarlane ink himself, you can see that there's a lot more lines and cr cross mark and cross hatch. But when Bob inked this book, it is super clean. It's really good, and I, I think it is so um, underrated. Sure, of course, two issue later, issue three hundred got all the thunder, right? Everybody in this hobby know about Spider-Man 300, but so little I talked about. I mean, if you look at this book and study the work in here, Todd McFarlane was really good, really good. He, you know, compared to, you know, his contemporary, like, you know, Rob Liefeld or other uh, Eric Larson, other guys in the same period, Todd and Jim Lee hit it up. Even above Jim Lee. Jim Lee, if you see his early work in Alpha Flight, is nowhere as polished as it was in Punisher. And then by the time he, he was in the Punisher series, he was bang on great. And then of course he hit peak, not peak, but he hit the high level with the X-Men, but Todd, my God. I mean, this is, you know, I'm a big fan of Todd um, and I really enjoyed this book and I think it is so underrated because it is his first work in Spider-Man and it it make him what we know of him today. Okay, because of this, I'm sure many fans are included when we got this book. We will be excited to see a new artist that potentially could be a superstar, and he was. Anyhow, um, that's it for this first episode of Underrated Comic Books of the Modern Age. If you don't have this book, get it. It's cheap. It's affordable. It's not an expensive book. You can get a high-grade copy raw for 50 bucks, give or take. So... Thanks for watching.